Um, John dedicated his life to fighting the opioid crisis through the creation of an innovative technology platform that holds both doctors and patients accountable. Interesting concept. And John Cruz is on the line right now. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. So uh, tell me your story. So you, uh, what, do you have an injury, a, a back injury? What, what was the problem? Why were you on opioids in the first place? You're absolutely right. I, I was a service person, and I was serving in the Iraq War, and I was hit by an explosion, uh, a mortar. And after that injury and getting my brothers in arms to safety, I've been on, I've tried many different therapies, some non-opiate, some physical therapy, some uh, medical procedures, and I've been on opiates since, and because of the pain that comes from being blown up by a bomb, we'll be on opiates the rest of my life. I'll yeah. never know a day without pain. Uh, and and, uh, and you feel that, uh, boy, I, I wonder, just the need to make the pain go away certainly lends itself to an addiction, right? It can, and there's a lot of schools of thoughts here, whether it's, in your DNA, is it, is it environmental? You know, can you take opiates for a long period of time and never become addicted? So certainly there's some schools of thought that say once you cross a certain line in the sand for how long you've been on it, your your probability is low, but that doesn't really matter when we're talking about human lives, right? So yeah. even though the probability is low, if it happens to you and it wrecks your life and your, your children, your spouse, your parents, your grandparents are, are seeing you throw your life away, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to cause a traumatic event. So uh, tell me your story. Did you have a situation where there was a doctor that, uh, obviously you had to have a doctor that was prescribing, but this was something sure. where he was a, he was somebody who was one of these top opioid prescribers around the country. <clears throat> well, yeah, and the, and the scary thing around some of these pill mills is there, there's not a, a whole lot of areas that aren't affected by this. Right. There's, the one I was reading with just a couple of days ago that, that popped up in Long Island and all the way to the other coast in San Diego last night. Um, it, it's big cities, little cities, rural America. Um, they can be anywhere. So the, the idea is to, to understand how do you empower yourself as a patient to not, be, not become a victim. Right, um, right. But, uh, that uh, so. What what advice do you give uh, people? And, I, and then I want to get into your your thoughts on on how we need to be holding doctors and patients accountable. But what advice would you give to people? What should people with pain, God forbid, what should they go through? What should they do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you, the very first thing that you've got to to look at is ensuring that you're finding a provider that has a care for you above his own pocketbook. So if you find that you feel that you're paying a cash-only perspective, you're seeing extraordinary long wait times, they don't take insurance, they let you pick your own medication, chances are you're visiting a pill mill. Chances are you're, you're not going to get the education you need to safely take these, these uh, different types of medications, these different opioid analgesics. And chances are you're going you're gonna to go down a really destructive path. So my advice, once you see any of those warning signs, turn around, walk away. Yeah. Find a different physician, and your your um, your physician was um, was has been described as the number one opioid prescriber in the federal Medicare program from years ago. I beg your pardon. Uh, that yours the the doctor that you were seeing, well, I said he was one of the top. Uh, I, I'm reading a stat here that says he was probably the the top, the number one opioid prescriber in the Medicaid program for years. Before I found, I, I visited a pill mill many years ago. Before yeah. I found a, a physician that was ethical, that cared about me and put my health above everything else. And that's, that's part of the reason why I started this up. It, it's a very confusing experience as a patient to go in and, and revere a doctor who's got so many decades of experience and education and to, and to be able to say as a patient with none of that, um, yeah. I know enough yeah. to know that this isn't right. Right, right. Yeah, you have to be your own advocate, I guess. And it sounds like you were, and uh, and and you've been able to get through this. Um, what uh, you you have a plan that you believe doctors and patients should be held accountable? I, I do, I do. But I'm, on both sides, there there's many examples of uh, truly good-hearted, truly well-natured physicians. If we look at the statistics, 
it's almost 99.1% of, of the ones that are well in meaning and well intentioned to the, to the pill mills. But again, numbers like proportions and statistics don't matter when someone's dying. Right. Right. Um, but the, the key to this whole thing is there's so many different medications. When you're, when you're taking opioids, chances are you're taking at least two other pills. You're probably going to take a muscle relaxer. You're probably going to take an anti-inflammatory and how these medicines interact with each other, uh, is, is really up to the patient to understand because you're the one that's taking it. Now, I'm not taking the hot seat off the physician. I think that uh, significant more time, significantly better education needs to be provided. Yeah. And that's what our technology platform does. It, it enables them to automate that to where each patient's given more than they need to know so that we reduce the risk of accidental overdose, and that's the key phrase. I mean, we're, we're assuming that the vast majority of these patients are well intended. The vast majority of these patients are are in good mental health, and the vast, and, and no pill mill is going to subscribe to my product because they're they're just going to be reported to the CDC within a few minutes. When we look at the data, we see that they're a pill mill. I've got no problem holding a doctor accountable. Well, I think that uh, the other thing is too. I hate to say, but the these pharmaceutical companies. Um, the doctors are just basically going based on the the studies they're given. Um, now we clearly have been educated to the point where these doctors should know over prescribing this stuff, and even mm-hmm. prescribing it in some cases can be very dangerous. So, uh, what can people do if people want to try to uh, uh, join your cause? How do how do they how do they do something? Check us out online. The website's www.drproveit.com. D R and then proveit.com. A um, whole lot of information there, a lot of information on our socials. Shoot us an email through there, and we'll get you everything you need to know to ensure that as a, either a patient or as a physician, you're, you're on a road to ensure you're never allowed to become a victim. All right, that's big. I mean, especially if there's someone out there right now that is, that is whether they or know someone, is going through uh, excruciating pain, and you can help, uh, help them go through the process and educate them so they don't go down the wrong road. The website is, right. uh, is statistically. Yep, everyone knows one. I'm a bigger part. I cut you off. No, that's okay. Yeah, statistically, everybody knows somebody, right? Absolutely, a thousand people a day today will overdose. It will cost us as a nation just about a billion dollars, and of that thousand that overdose, about 114 are going to lose their lives. Hmm. So when we think about this chain of events and how many different people we have to know to someone that's on an opioid medication, you don't have to look very far. Uh, all right, John, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Again, that website is drproveit.com. Thanks a lot for coming on, John. We appreciate it, and thank you for your service.